Welcome to another one of our A-frame construction projects. And in this video, we are going to make the building a little wider, a little taller, and we're going to install a second floor with a set of stairs. And I'm going to go through this video a little faster because of the other ones I've already made. You can get a pretty good idea about the footings and take a look at these, get a pretty good idea how you might build them. And I would definitely recommend watching the other videos in the series before building a house like this. Keep in mind that this is only an example. You might need to contact structural engineers in your area and local building authorities before building a project like this. So we are going to have some footings in here. And I went ahead and put a 2x6. You could put a 2x8 piece of treated. I bolted it down to the footing and then put a 4x6 in here. And you can fasten this with building hardware or simply nail it to the joist and nail it to the sill plate. And these will be basically transferring the weight from the post above. You can build these differently. And of course, might need to if you get a structural engineer involved in your project. And our mid-span blocking for the joist. And of course, the joist will be lapping over the beams. And the floor joist will be 16 inches on center. And pretty self-explanatory for a crawl space. And even though I don't have it drawn in this video, you might need to raise the building a little higher or lower the soil so that people can actually crawl underneath the house if that's required in your area. So I'm here and kind of showing you how the posts are going to be transferring the load from above. The post is going to sit on top of the floor sheathing and then transfer the weight down through the footing to the soil. Next up, let's go ahead and install our floor sheathing kind of pan out here we have our posts and you could always install these posts to where they're sitting directly on top of the concrete footing I've done that plenty of times before and in that situation the post will go through the floor sheathing so don't forget about that next up let's go ahead and install our front and our back lower walls and even though I won't be providing you with all the information on how to figure out all of the wall framing calculations, roof rafters, I will be glad to show you that in a future video. Let us know if you want more information on that. And of course, our posts that are going to be transferring the weight from above. And I went ahead and centered the door in the building and then moved this post over to where we're going to have shorter joists on this side, a little bit longer joist on this side. And the reason why I didn't put the beam in the center over the door header is because it would require a large door header, something that might need to actually be framed into the floor framing. However, I didn't think that was necessary in this example. Next up, let's go to the top of the wall, provide you with a different view of it. Kind of spin it around here. Next up, let's go ahead and install the floor framing. And I didn't put any joist hangers in here or building hardware. Or should I say I didn't install them on each one of the floor joists, but I did install one on one to provide you with an example of what you're going to need to build the floor. So we have our stairwell, our beams, and of course our beams are sitting on top of the posts where you can see it transferring down to the footings. Next up, let's go ahead and install the stair stringers. And I went ahead and lined the bottom of the stairway up with the posts here. Or you could say that I moved the posts to line them up with the bottom of the stairway. And in this building, the stairway is going to occupy a lot of space. And you might consider moving it to the outside of the building if you need a little more floor space. Next up, let's go ahead and install the lower roof rafters that are going to be sitting on top of a sill plate and then on top of the floor framing. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the bottom here. And of course, we are notching it for the fascia board. And I would imagine all of this stuff here could be fastened together with 16D nails. And our roof rafters are 24 inches on center. And we will be lapping the upper roof rafters with the lower roof rafters. And these will all nail together with 16D nails. You get a nice connection here between the lower and the upper framing. Next up, let's go ahead and install our blocking. 
And then go around to the front of the building where you can see this last rafter here is going to be breaking half on the block so that we could get some nice nailing. This rafter is sitting on top of the floor beam. And this one here has a little bit of a notch over the floor. And just kind of created that to provide you with another example of something you can do if you're looking for a little stronger connection. And I think this building will require mid-span blocks, so I put them in along with the collar ties. The collar ties are kind of designed the same as the previous examples I've made so far and will be bolted to the roof rafters. Next up, let's head to the top of the roof, the ridge. And if you remember, this design here is similar to the previous examples I've made for this video series. Let's go ahead and install our lookouts to support the fascia board. 32 inches on center, 32 inch on center spacing. Seems to be the norm for most construction projects. Starting to look like a house here. Next up, let's go ahead and install the front and back upper walls. These are going to be two by six. I wasn't really happy with the height on this, even though I put quite a few boards in the center here. One's going to be underneath the ridge, and then we're going to have two more next to it. And of course, this will provide us with a nice solid structure here. And we are going to have rake windows here. I went ahead and installed some headers here, and I kind of notched it around here. This is something you don't see very often, but I just kind of took what we do with the roof rafter and kind of did the same thing with the window header here and I made it an inch and a half wide down here so that it lines up with the trimmer supporting it from below and of course the top of the roof you can see here where I have one full length stud going all the way to the top and a couple on each side and you just nail the heck out of them together to create almost a solid post and again you could always use a post here and you could always get rid of the collar ties if you wanted to and install a ridge beam here next up fascia board we're going to go ahead and install the fascia board the same as we have in the previous examples, except for this one thing. You're going to need to connect these boards with an angle. I don't like to have a square cut there. A 45 degree angle is nice. And I do have other videos how you can use a flat strap or a flat framing anchor to connect this together on the back. Kind of put some screws in it and that will keep it from twisting and separating. So let's go ahead and start wrapping the video up with our roof sheathing. And even though I don't think this is going to be the last video in the series, I'm probably going to start spacing them out a little farther because I'm not seeing a big interest from you, the viewer, in them.